around here is our year of gratitude. There are details about what that means in our bulletin, and we'll talk about that a little more later. We have so much to be thankful for tonight, and one is our beautiful campus, updated campus, and we'd like to gratefully acknowledge the Native peoples whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant Native communities who make their home here today. If you're joining us on Zoom, please feel free to share your prayer requests via our chat box. We will get to those later in our service as well. And we're so glad that you joined us. Maldi Thursday is the church annual 
commemoration of the institution of the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, as well as the night when Jesus washed his disciples' feet and reminded them that the Christian job is to serve. We will be enacting both of these ceremonies tonight and invite you to take part. This is also the first time in a long time that communion wine will be available. You may choose to have Father Chris dip your wafer in wine, or you may drink out of the common cup. Please note that on Maudie Thursday, our service ends in silence and darkness as we gather at our altar of repose. Let us now enter into a moment of holy silence as we move together into this holy night. Bless the Lord who forgives all us. shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. 
For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. Stuck. <laughs> Please join us. Uh, join me in reading Psalm 116. I love the Lord because oh, he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because, because he has inclined his ear to me. How shall I pray? For all the good things he has done for me. I will offer the sacrifice and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fill in the presence of all his people. And precious is the sight of the Lord, and to that of his servants. O Lord, I am a servant. I am a servant, child, even a free king of my life. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fill my house to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Our second lesson is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, a small church community in modern day Greece, and recounts the Lord Jesus institution of Holy Communion. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God.
Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things in his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied the towel around himself. When he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him, he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, you, you are going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I, set, for I set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who has sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do not. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You will never wash my feet. Yes, it's that time of year again to hear about our master's march towards the cross and final stages of teaching his disciples that they are to love one another. Sometimes something struck me funny about this is that a reading in the gospel is that important that helped to establish Holy Week and define the church and Christianity is only found in John's gospel. I thought to myself, really? And obviously I can't tell you all why. And I know a couple of y'all might be sitting there thinking, but believe me, I'm not that old, so. <laughs> this gospel 
is one of Jesus's last opportunity to teach those who he will entrust to form Christianity and the church for the world. Yes, I understand that the Jewish people had already had the Torah. They had the Pharisees, they had scribes, they had a synagogue and they had a temple. But as we read all the gospels, we come to realize that Jesus is clarifying Torah, even to the point of expanding its meanings and rules that are found within the Torah. He expects us to live by Torah as he did. That is to show true love, compassion, humility, and equality for all people, no exceptions. Jesus's world was totally inclusive to all people, both Jews and Gentiles. You all know that just as well as I do, that, that can be a big issue in anyone's life <laughs> to live into that commitment. I've always said Jesus's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself is difficult at best and will be something that I personally will probably have to work on till the day that I meet my master. But also as I said, I'm still a work in progress and I'm headed in the right direction. As we start the gospel today, Passover is starting and Jesus knows his hour has come to depart this world as a human to join the father. Now remember up until this time, Jesus has always said, my time has not yet come. But now it's a totally different situation. I always ask myself during this time of year, how do you think Jesus felt knowing his faith? Because even though he was divine, at this point he was still totally human also. And he had human feelings to include questioning, little anger like maybe in the temple, fear and concerns, he was one of us. So how would you feel? Then it said he loved us to the end. Even on the cross, he showed that he loved us. In Luke 23, verse 43, he uses my favorite words, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I love that because it gives somebody like me a hope that one day too, I will see my master. And that is a glorious feeling. Then it's time again to pick on our poor buddy Judas. Two weeks ago, it was about oil. Today, it's about water. Now the Bible used the word betrayal and in the purest form, I guess he did. But I'm gonna stick up a little bit for him. I choose to see this betrayal as fulfillment of his destiny, that God had predetermined that outcome of his life. Even Jesus was hurt by this, but still loved Judas. He knew that Judas had to fulfill this act. Also in the gospel, I understand the phrasing to the end. That was just his human love for us. I choose to say his love is indefinite, not ending by death. But you all know that. I'm not telling you anything new. Now we can talk about that part. Some uh, folks feel is uncomfortable. And they stand back as Peter did and say to ourselves, oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to wash my feet. My shoes are fine just where they are. You know, remember that what was going on as part of the Jewish purification of washing hands and feet. And a good host would get their slaves or offer a basin to the people to wash their feet before anything would go on. When Jesus did this, he was showing an unwavering love and compassion not an act of Jewish purification. This was an act of love for building of the church and community. Jesus is desperate because he knows the time was near 
And the Father had given him, put all things into his hands. He knew he was in control of his destiny, not the Romans or the Pharisees, a faith he understood and accepted. Jesus knows, as we should, that the cross is not a sign of defeat, but of victory. But because it is on the cross and afterwards, the world will come to know that he has accomplished the work for which he was sent to us. It's on the cross that his divinity will be revealed to the world. And poor Peter speaks up as the disciples, not fully understanding what is really happening. Yes, they always did. He did as many of us would do today by saying, you will never wash my feet. That was his teacher, the Messiah. And that act would be completely beneath him to do such. It should be the disciples washing his feet. And I understand that feeling, but Peter and the disciples will understand that one day of what and why Jesus did what he did. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen until after the resurrection. Then Jesus sort of lights Peter up by saying, unless I wash your feet, you have no share with me. In other words, you have no part or portion of a larger amount in heaven. I'm going to break from my script. I got a little note saying break from script because I'm going to tell a story about what happened last night to Deacon Donna and myself down at Detroit Men's Rescue. Before Donna arrived, a uh, gentleman walked up to me and started talking to me. It was really hard to understand, probably because he was lacking beauty, as in most. And he pulls his wall out and he reaches through his wallet and he pulls out a $20 bill and hands it to me. And I'm going, what's this for? He says, God gave it to me. I'm giving it to you for the church. God will give me more. Well, I thought about this high because that's true faith. And I said, you know what? If there's someone in this earth that's ever going to have a portion, that man will have a portion. Don and I asked him three, four times. Same answer every time. Finally, we just said, I'm not, we're not going to insult this guy. We'll give it to the food pantry and we'll push it forward. He's given it to us. We'll give it to, back to the poor again. So that's my story. It just makes me think about what would I do with I in this position? 20 bucks, living in a shelter with probably a bag of clothes, and he gives me $20. So I said, if anybody delivers, deserves a share in heaven, that person does. But now we're back to our regular scheduled program. <laughs> Get on with this. And as fortunately, we've had 2,000 years to understand where the disciples only had a few years with the master and nothing in history has ever happened like this. Susan Highland wrote, sharing in Jesus involves being served by him, even in so lowly and intimate a form as foot washing. Again, we know that this is far deeper than just washing feet. This is not only a gift from Jesus, but an example of humble service that he is giving to them to build the church and community after he is gone. This is the truest form of unconditional love that we are to show to all of God's people. Then it's time for Judas to be spoken of again as the betrayer and clean. So now we clean in two different ways, both in a physical and a spiritual meaning in this reading. In verse 11, that was, then in 13, Jesus says, you call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. Well, I sort of let the cat out of the bag there, didn't it? What he is telling them is that all people are equal, so do not judge or put titles on them. Then Jesus tries to clarify for all this in verse 16, when he uses again my favorite words, very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater 
than the one who sent them. Let me ask you, do you think Jesus might have been speaking by himself? And then I start thinking, I'll have to research it because there's an old saying, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> I don't know. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is a form of true discipleship. Then it jumps to verse 13, 31 through 35, because in verses in between there, they're talking about Judas. And let's face it, this is not really about Judas. It's about Jesus. It's his last attempt to teach disciples. So the first thing is that Judas leaves, and we should all have a good idea where he's heading to. Can we say Pharisees? Most of this section speaks of glorification of Jesus. A commentary I read describes Jesus' glorification as, glory is characterized of God and refers to God's all-inspiring <clears throat> majesty. God shared his glory with Jesus. In this gospel, Jesus' glorification is associated with his death, resurrection, and ascension. Just as God's glory was revealed at Sinai and Exodus 24, verses 16 through 17, so it will be revealed at the cross and the open tomb. Jesus totally opens up to his faith to fulfill scripture in verse 33, when he says, I am only here a little longer. And again, where I'm going, you cannot come. Then in verse 34, with this commandment to love one another, just as I have loved you. Notice the past tense, loved. Then in 35, Jesus says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you have love for one another. A final thought for all of us. Will people know you and all of us as one of Jesus' disciples? Amen.
directions in the way we can help. Let us pray to the Lord. for us. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left on us. Keep you in eternal. Amen. 
May the peace of the Lord be with you all. and welcome everyone once again to Monday Thursday. Tonight is the first of the three of the great three days and we continue tomorrow at 12 noon and 7 p.m. for Good Friday services then on Holy Saturday at 10 a.m. and the Easter Vigil on Saturday is at 8 p.m. We will be opening our driveway once again on Good Friday for our annual Good Friday Prayer and Cross giveaway. We will welcome hundreds of people onto our campus on this blessed day of prayer and remembrance. You can check your bulletins for a complete list of service times for Holy Week in case you missed any of them. If your heart is going out to the refugees in Ukraine, we're working on a way to help. At the end of the month, we're holding a special Ukrainian dinner to benefit victims of the war there. Mark your calendars for Friday, April 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. when you'll be able to eat in or take out a fabulous, authentic, catered Eastern European meal. Right now, we need volunteers. Make sure to sign up on the clipboards in the atrium. You can also place your order on the parish website. Just click the Ukraine dinner box on the home page. Also, we are starting an after school tutoring program in our parish hall later this month. Students from Vandenberg Elementary will be coming over on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. to get help with their classwork. Can you volunteer to help? Please see Judy Walsh to sign up. Finally, Mother's Day is less than a month away and we want to honor your mother. Please send a photo of your mother to Father Chris along with a one word adjective to describe your mom. He's making a Mother's Day video, but we can all enjoy that we can all enjoy on the second Sunday in May. Meanwhile, you can always keep up with the latest on our parish website. And thanks again for being with us on this night. Once again, <laughs> good day and blessed Monday Thursday to you all. Are you grateful today? I am grateful to see you. I am Donna Lockhart, Deacon, and I am here with this week's Gratitude Bible verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And here's our gratitude challenge for you this week. During Holy Week, write a gratitude list. I know it can be a long one, 10 to 100 items, mine's <laughs> even longer, and go through it once a day for Holy Week. In 2022, we are combating this terrible virus and depression by choosing to be thankful. As a reminder, there are blue bracelets available in the narthex with the word gratitude on them. Take one and be grateful. And thank you all, and I am grateful that you are here. Ascribe to the Lord, the honor of his name, bring all things and come into his courts with praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Meek and majestic God, you set aside the perfection of your Trinitarian life to create the universe. You called the children of Abraham to be your priestly kingdom. You gave your people freedom in the parting of the sea and marked them for life with the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus, you laid aside the robe of your majesty and knelt among your children, facing humiliation and rejection. In his agony in the garden and suffering on the cross, you showed the world the extent of your love and your loving and your longing to bring us home to the throne where we shall join angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, praising your holy name in them and in him. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are poor, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Self giving God. In Jesus, you became the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world and the living bread broken for the life of your children. Come among us in the power of your Holy Spirit, that your people, as fragile and fitful as your disciples, may become your temple. And that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us that body and that blood of your Son, Jesus Christ who had suffered with his disciples, took the bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Blessed and broken God, be among your people who taste the bitter herbs of slavery and oppression. Be close to your children who are poured out in grief and despair. Remain the church, your son's body, where it is broken by discord and dispute, and renew your creation in the joy of thanksgiving. Spread your table in the face of friends and enemies, that all may know your peace, and gather in the company of your saints, where you, in the presence of Christ, and in the companionship of the Holy Spirit, are all of all one God. <laughs> now, as the sake of Christ has called us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that dying Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith. The text gave.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for giving us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for assuring us there while we are mysteries, that we are living members of the body of your Son, heirs of your eternal kingdom, and from now God has sent us out to do the work you have given us to do. The love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be our honor and our honor. Amen. 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 God, Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, from whom our Lord Jesus Christ is willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now my tongue of history tell me of the glorious body And so begins the hour in which Jesus would fulfill his mission. 
and the scriptures which he knew as a child would come to life. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him.
My, my soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deed that he has done. As Jesus was making his way to the garden, Judas was somewhere else. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priest. And Judas said to them, What will you give me if I deliver him to you? And John, the beloved disciple, said to him, Master, who is it that shall betray me? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. And John, the beloved disciple, said to him, Master, who is it that shall betray thee? 
And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give the bread when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas. Then said Jesus to him, That which you do, do quickly. And Judas, having received the bread, dipped in wine, went immediately out, and it was night. The congregation may have meal. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and they came to a place which is called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he went forward. And he went forward a little and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you would. And again, Jesus prayed, saying, Oh, my father. If this cup might not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and elders of the people. And Judas came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus, and Jesus saith to him, Friend, will you betray me with a kiss? And the whole company of them rose up and bound Jesus and led him away to be delivered up to Pilate. 